pull up a box of disused robot parts and sit down. Friends, uh, it's time for another mask here in the Mask Fan Attic where we discuss old interesting uh, masks, obviously. And first, you, we'll need our mask stand before we get to it. So everybody get out your wad of filthy plaster with an old cardboard mailing tube stuck in it. We're classy here at Horror Hotel, aren't we? Uh, get out your wad of plaster with, and by the way, can you see, you probably can't see, uh, who, who this mailing tube uh, actually came from originally. I see it says Basil Gogos on there. That's pretty cool, don't you think? If you know who Basil Gogos is, he's the best. Nobody better than Basil Gogos. And this uh, tube apparently had a Basil Gogos print in it at some point. And anyway, now that we have that, it's time to get out this uh, this week's mask, which is this 700 pound gorilla right here, known as the Metaluna Mutant. As seen in the 1955 Universal Pictures movie, This Island Earth. Now, the Metaluna Mutant is a very popular subject for masks. Um, mask collectors have loved this guy for a long time, as, uh, as have all kinds of uh, science fiction fans, movie fans, monster fans. He's really one of the iconic space monsters, especially uh, from the 50s drive-in B-movie kind of uh, era. He's one of the most iconic space creatures ever. This combination of brains and veins really uh, struck a chord with people as far as what space creatures, monsters on other planets might look like, you see. So, very popular character, and he's been uh, brought to mask life a bunch of times by various artists and uh, various companies. However, the definitive one to own, I would say, is the Don Post Studios one. Now, a lot of people think the Don Post Metaluna Mutant Mask was around in the 60s and 70s uh, and was from the original movie mold and all that. That's not exactly true. There were a few copies sold at uh, the Universal uh, Studios uh, gift shop back in uh, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, somewhere in there, uh, that were from the original mold. But when people ordered these out of um, uh, the backs of old famous monsters of Filmland magazines and such, they weren't really getting one from the original mold. Look at the size of this monstrosity, okay? It was already a pretty tough sell to convince people to pay 35 or 40 bucks for a uh, rubber mask back in those days. It would have really been difficult to sell people on the notion of paying enough uh, to make it worth producing a gigantic mask that's this, this much bigger than a human head. So what they did at Down Post was they re-sculpted it in a more sensible head size. And there were two different versions available over the years. Uh, the first one from like the mid-60s to the mid-70s, and then in the mid-70s for a short time uh, there was a second uh, version. But they were both smaller and uh, more, more uh, sensible, easier to wear instead of having this great big heavy uh, head flopping around like you would have with the real ones from the movies. These were easy for people to, you know, uh, wear in a practical way for Halloween or costume parties or whatever. So if you bought one back then, you didn't really get one uh, from the original movie mold. You got a Don Post re-sculpt, but they were great. Both of them were very nice. The first one was sort of uh, rough and tumble, has sort of a crude look about it, but very effective. The second one was uh, smoother and rather more, um, a little more movie accurate, I think. Uh, just, just scaled down so that you didn't have this giant head uh, situation. And I don't know if you can see this, but this version which has a Universal Studios Monsters tag on it and a cloth sticker inside that says Universal Studios Monsters. This version from Don Post came along in uh, the 1998-99 season as part of the big calendar mask resurrection uh, movement when they reissued all the great uh, 12. Uh, well, they reissued 11 of them, but that's another story, okay? Uh, they, they didn't reissue a gorilla at that time, but they did reissue in the 1998-99 season uh, the other, the classic Universal monsters that were on the famous 1966 monster calendar. Uh, this was the first mutant mask to have this extra, you see this base going around here, sort of a display base? The first one to have that at the bottom, because the smaller ones, obviously, since they were for wearing, they wouldn't have had, uh, you know, a display base, right? Of course not. So this mask, which came along in, again, 1998-99, uh, this is the first time one was really offered to the public that was an original movie mold copy, uh, not counting the handful that were sold uh, at, uh, at Universal back in the late 60s, 1970 uh, period. It really took until 1998-99 for anybody to get uh, one that was this close to the real thing from the film, okay? Now, uh, as I mentioned, other people have done versions of this character. In recent years, there was one by uh, Rubies, which was the small uh, version along the lines of what Post had done in the 60s and 70s, a more normal head size. And uh, before that, there was a gigantic one from uh, Elusive Concepts. In fact, they took a couple of stabs at this character. Um, theirs tended to be a little chunkier, a little more squared off looking, and the paint was really strange on them. Uh, some of them had these, uh, see the... Um, the crevices, the creases in the brain, those were red on a lot of the Elusive Concepts ones. And for a while, uh, Elusive Concepts was selling brown Metaluna Mutants. 
even though it's a color film and you can see in the movie they're kind of blue with red veins they were selling brown ones that kind of look like they, they were made out of uh, link sausage maybe they were thinking of invasion of the sausage men i think at that point but anyway uh the don post one here is adapted from the original molds it doesn't still doesn't look exactly like uh the ones in the movie from the original molds to me in fact when i first saw these i assumed they had deliberately taken some measures to scale it down a little and i didn't know why i thought oh maybe to make it fit in a certain size packing box or for storage maybe just to conserve latex i don't know but it's it's the sides of the head have shrunken in a little and the brain has shrunken up a little the back of the head doesn't stick out as far and you end up with the eye areas looking a little bit bigger proportionately than the than uh, you see in the film and how do i know that well stay tuned see I, I like i said i thought they did that on purpose but apparently no it just happened it just shrank at a slightly uh distorted uh rate it didn't shrink the same all over when they recast it but i have one here for your viewing pleasure that is from one of those original molds and i don't know if this will show up on your monitor i don't know if you'll be able to tell this but it's it's very plain in person uh something has been lost here in terms of um, voluptuousness he's just not as curvaceous as the original mold uh, version even though everything is pretty similar i don't know if you can tell but the brain is flatter here it sticks out more on the original and if we look at the back which i know you're anxious to do because you'll see less of me that way if you look at the back i hope you can tell this the back of the originals had a nicer shape and was more like an actual brain and stuck out farther so uh, i hope that shows up but it does in person to me here i can see quite a difference in the shape of the brain which is why which is what led me to the apparently incorrect uh, assumption that they had resized it a little bit on purpose i think no it just shrank down a little bit a little bit off so now you might be wondering about the paint on this one this one came from don post this one from the movie mold was painted by me and i kind of wanted it to look kind of like uh, the movie but kind of like the one on the famous 1966 monster calendar and let's face it were it not for the famous 1966 monster calendar which ended up using the metaluna mutant as one of its 12 uh, monsters people wouldn't really be um, that in love with the mutant as far as familiarity i don't think there were a lot of other monsters at the time that didn't make that uh, didn't make the calendar but they had uh, an original mold head uh, available to them so they used him as one of the monsters so that sort of led people uh, fans and collectors and movie watchers to think of the uh, metaluna mutant as being one of the classic universal monsters but in terms of his cinema career it's really not very impressive he's one of the most impressive aliens ever i think but, uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I remember uh, when I was a kid, I had monster books that had pictures of uh, this character in it and uh, in them, and I assumed he was, uh, you know, the focal point of a movie. But when you actually get to see the movie, This Island Earth, which I didn't see until, I don't know, my teenage years at some point, I was very disappointed because uh, he doesn't so much, in the movie, he doesn't so much represent this great, scary alien presence, and, and uh, he doesn't fight in the war. He doesn't, he, basically, all he does is uh, come out and flail around for a few moments and keel over. It's pretty disappointing. You think you're going to see this guy, or like an army of these guys, fighting a space war, and then he just keels over. So it's kind of, kind of a letdown when you're a young uh, person watching the movie. And I have other problems with the movie, too. I, some of its uh, philosophies and politics and that are, are confusing and, and uh, have some, some serious logic holes in them. Uh, but, but back to the mask. Um, one of the classic masks of all time and i'm having trouble finding enough room for everything here because the one other thing i would like to uh mention is that there were hands uh sold to go with the Metaluna mutant masks now don post uh, jr himself told me personally in the late 90s that when the masks uh, the calendar series was reissued all the hands were going to be reissued too and they were going to have frankenstein hands wolfman hands mummy hands black lagoon creature hands and uh, among others well that didn't happen they ended up not doing the hands they only did the heads but in the uh, 60s and 70s, there were um, Don Post Studios Metaluna Mutant hands, which were basically pinchers, and they looked a lot like this. Now, there were two versions of those, just as there were two different mutant masks. The first one's very different. Uh, they had the two big pincher... Uh, they had that effect going on, but they really don't look much like his hands in the uh, movie. Do we have a picture of the first version hands? They're kind of crude, and they're shaped weird, and they don't really look like... Okay, I guess we don't have a picture of the first set, but take my word for it. These are the best ones. Now, other versions of the hands have been done as well. What? No, no, don't put the picture up now. Take it down. Including by Elusive Concepts, who also offered their own uh, re-sculpted Metaluna Mutant hands to go with the previously mentioned Metaluna Mutant mask. I don't think they ever did brown ones. 
I don't think you could get hands for the brown version. I think you could just get the blue and red version similar to this. But the Elusive Concepts ones were bigger and sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, blockier? Yeah, not as much of a nice shape as these, which really looked like uh, right out of the movie. These were sold in the mid-70s, and since the mutant had uh, no right or left hand, really, he just had these pinchers for both hands, uh, when you got a pair, you basically got two of the same sculpture. They were the same mold. So they only had one claw, and they would just make up two of them, and then it looks the same when you're wearing it, because the only differences in the details are like specific wart placement and issues like that, so that was probably a uh, perfectly good idea. Uh, more Metaluna Mutant trivia. I had mentioned he was one of the most famous uh, space monsters of all time. Uh, he also made appearances in other movies over the years. Um, if you see any old TV show or, uh, or movie where there's a science fiction convention or a party with people dressed as uh, monsters, if you look, search in the background, there's a good chance you'll see somebody in a Metaluna Mutant mask of one kind or another. Uh, the Don Post version, a Don Post version, turned up in an episode of Lost in Space, the TV show, uh, where it was called the Hades Monster. Uh, that one appears to have been repainted green to match a green seaweed-covered looking uh, body, seaweed suit, and uh, also was adorned with Creature from the Black Lagoon hands. So the one, well, the one on Lost in Space had the creature's hands and the seaweed suit body. Then in uh, 1975, a children's Saturday morning TV show called Far Out Space Nuts, I'm not kidding, that was the name of it, uh, Far Out Space Nuts, used uh, Don Post Metaluna Mutants for an episode called uh, Flight of the Pippets. And the Pippets were um, basically Metaluna Mutants, but they were repainted pink. And I believe they had uh, some of these mouth panel areas cut out so that uh, the actor's mouth would show so that the actors could talk, you see. Um, there was an episode of Wonder Woman where somebody was wearing one of these. And they turn up all over the place because it's such an iconic monster. It really is one of the classic space creatures of all time and space. Um, you notice the hands don't exactly match uh, the head in terms of the, the shade of blue and such. Uh, these were not painted at the same time as the head, or even by the same person, come to think of it. But um, one of the problems with the 1999-98 uh, edition you see before you, apart from the fact that the little bit of brain shrinkage going on, and believe me, brain shrinkage is the number one problem facing Americans today. It really is. A uh, little bit of brain shrinkage, and another problem is these tend to uh, lose their color. Uh, something that some of the collectors refer to as mask rust happens and exactly what the cause of that is there are several schools of thought on that and nobody knows exactly how to uh, you know best prevent it and combat it and such uh, so so I'm not going to get into the various theories on that but I will say a lot of these have been repainted since 1999 because they turned a greenish brown color making them look a little more like Hades monsters now that I think of it they turned a greenish brown color and they didn't keep their nice blueness to the brain. Uh, if you notice, this one's a little darker than it, it started out, and a little browner, grayer. Uh, if you notice, the red here looks really dark, like a, like a wine red or a brick red. It started out pretty bright red. Uh, and I don't know who designed the color scheme for the original Chris Mueller Metaluna Mutants for the movie, but wow, are they colorful. Uh, so you see a lot of green on these sometimes, but really, there wasn't any green in the brain. There's a little bit of green right here, and then some green highlighting in his uh, mouth plate area. Uh, but there's, there shouldn't be green anywhere else. Uh, a lot of them have had to be repainted because of that. And uh, you may see them in, you may see one that looks really dark and murky and this, this ugly color. Uh, that's probably because of the mask rust. You see, I remember to do this when I said it because it isn't really rust, you see. It's just a, uh, a systematic darkening of the paint and there are a couple of things that could have caused that. But anyway, it's sad that the Don Post edition from 98, 99, wonderful as it is, didn't keep its didn't hold its color very well and, and a lot of them don't look so hot now as i was saying a lot of them have been repainted another wonderful thing about this mask though let's get back onto the positive let's accentuate the positive shall we another great thing about this mask is that they foam filled the brain so all this is solid foam clear down to where the face uh, starts that's a face what we will what we will go ahead and call his face you see uh, there's foam in there, which is nice because you don't have to stuff it with like 25 years worth of uh, newspapers or shopping bags or something. It stays in shape and holds its shape nicely for display. Uh, on the downside, all that foam in there also makes it very top heavy, so he kind of wants to, to topple over uh, pretty easily, which is why uh, I have chosen to put this one on a 10-pound uh, block of filthy plaster. I'll come up with something better. Come on, give me a break. Um, I think he's insulted by the filthy plaster, but it's a little hard to display them because of that top-heavy quality. When you combine the weight of all that foam and the fact that the head is bigger at the top than it is at the bottom, it's a little hard to get these guys to behave sometimes. So 
uh, you know, if you live in an area where there are a lot of earthquakes, you may have seen your uh, 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 Don Post Medaluna mutant bouncing out into the street at some point, tragically, and had to like run out and chase it into oncoming truck traffic and bring it back in because the earthquake made it fall off your shelf. All right, that's all I have to say about this. I believe there were 498 of these sold in the 1998-99 period. And I remember uh, I spoke to Don Post's secretary at the time, and, and she was the first one who told me. She said, oh yeah, there are 498 masks being made. And I said, 498, what happened to the other two? And she said, what other two? Uh, so I don't know uh, any more than that about that. But it's still a great mask, and of all the Metaluna mutants out there, the best one, well, the best one is the one from the original movie mold, obviously, but the, the best one other than that is the adapted from the movie mold, pretty close, version from Don Post in 1998-99. A beautiful thing, and by the way, these are plastic um, bubbles, these are plastic domes uh, in the eye area, the plastic lens with some red and silver uh, striations going on there. So it's not really, um, that's not just painted and then glossed. Those are plastic lenses, which is pretty deluxe, I think. And until next time, well, ask yourself, what if there were no hypothetical questions? <laughs>